Joining us now is Larry Shover, Chief Investment Officer at SFG Alternatives in Chicago. Larry, great to see you there. Thanks very much for joining us. Now, just starting off with the oil price there, which in yes. the latest session has tumbled. There's back and forth speculation, a lot of volatility happening in the oil market at the moment. But it looks like the chances of a deal being reached are shrinking. The more we seem to hear, the greater the doubts. Yeah, you're exactly right. I mean, I don't think any kind of deal will be struck, but the positive that's coming out of all this is that perhaps it will open the door to negotiations between now and November. I mean, I think the market, uh, or the media anyway, made a very large deal about it um, last week, thinking a deal was in place that Saudi Arabia was going to cut if Iran froze. And we know now that that's most likely not going to happen. But again, the good news is that it will open the door for uh, discussions between now and November. OK, so it could be that November OPEC meeting. Um, uh, there's also talk about maybe mid-2017 meeting, something coming out of that. Uh, so you're predicting nothing to, coming, to come out this week. It's more likely to sort of be down the track. Yeah, exactly. And again, I think there's going to be a lot of off, offline conversations leading up to uh, that meeting. But yeah, nothing's going to come out today. And I think the market at some point will have to return to its fundamentals a little bit, uh, realizing that we have a product oversupply, uh, that on the supply side, we have Libya, we have Iran and Nigeria, all, all supplying the market with a lot more than anybody expected. And on the flip side, on the demand side, we have India, China, U.S. at different degrees decelerating on demand. So uh, it's causing a product demand, but I still think we'll see a balanced market. I used to think it would be the end of this year. I'm now pushing that back to the first half of 2017. Now, if we don't see a deal coming out uh, on Wednesday, how do you think the market might trade? Um, there's talk about that, that oil price dropping back below $40 a barrel, even heading towards $30. Do you think that could be the case? Would it be a short-term knee-jerk reaction potentially? Or do you think at this stage the market has priced in the fact that we may not actually see any sort of deal? Yeah, exactly. I think at this stage, there's been so much preparation that I don't think anybody would be surprised. In fact, I think it would be quite the opposite if, in fact, they did reach some sort of deal. So I think $42 for people that look at charts and uh, technicals seems to be a really good support level for WTI. To get below that, um, it could be a knee-jerk reaction, but I really doubt it at this point. Mm -hmm. All right, let's move away from uh, the oil price and I wanted to get your thoughts on uh, the presidential debate uh, that happened last night because it does seem like, um, you know, markets saw some relief today there uh, with uh, sort of Hillary Clinton looking like she had outperformed Donald Trump. Um, very much politics is now at the centre of the market narrative. Has a lot of this uncertainty on that front eased after last night's debate? I think so. I mean, at least if you look at the currency market, you look at uh, Canadian dollar, especially Me Mexican peso rallied uh, one and a half percent um, overnight um, on this news. Um, you know, I think it, it didn't settle who's going to win the uh, election by any stretch of the imagination, but it basically uh, underscored the lines a lot deeper that um, Trump's message seems to be a little bit blustery. And uh, Clinton looked a lot more presidential and a answered the questions with ease. So I think if nothing else, I mean, Clinton still leads. Uh, and I think it just put the market to rest once and for all, because there was that outlier that Trump would come in and actually steal the um, or win uh, the debate last night. And that clearly did not happen. Mm. And does the market want to see a Hillary Clinton win? I mean, uh, if, if we are to see, obviously, a lot still will happen over the next six weeks as we lead into the November election. But is that what the market would hope to see? You know, um, I would say about three months ago, absolutely, that is correct. Like the market was really pricing in a Clinton victory and a Trump victory would be really, really bad for the markets. That's changed a little bit as the polls have gotten closer and that as people have just uh, thought of the uh, alternative scenario. The short answer is yes, it would be a lot smoother for the markets if Clinton won, but it wouldn't be as disastrous as, it, as people thought it would be maybe three months ago if Trump would, would win the uh, election. 
Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, let, let's talk about some other data that actually came out today, just moving on from uh, the election, which also certainly helped the market in terms of those consumer-related stocks, those airlines, Amazon, reaching a, a record as well, I note, in the latest session. We saw a pretty good positive bounce in consumer confidence, its highest level in about nine years or so, and a lot came down to the employment outlook. And this survey uh, certainly looks to be boding pretty well for consumer spending. Yeah, absolutely. And we've noticed that there is a tremendous lag on these numbers. Um, you know, when you have a stable dollar, you have stable oil prices, people continue to purchase more, consume more. There seems to be a lag, but it's really exciting to see that number on top of the uh, PMI services number, on top of the Eurozone M3 money supply, which made its biggest gain since 2009. is absolutely stunning. So it did a lot to solidify the markets uh, today and give people calm and going back to that trade that they're used to, and that is uh, buying a lot of consumer staples. Mm -hmm. Yeah, certainly, uh, hopefully, we'll, uh, we'll bode well for some of those stocks. All right, let's take a look at the week ahead, um, what we've got coming up, because there are um, a, a couple of potential roadblocks and, and detours, I guess. We have a fair bit of data on the agenda, those uh, P PCE um, deflators and so forth coming out at the end of the week, uh, second quarter GDP revised figures. And then, of course, we have Janet Yellen speaking as well. So what uh, is going to be some of the next major catalysts, I guess, on the tape for the remainder of the week? You know, it seems, I mean, this is hard to believe, but it seems like the market's looking past that and right now is worried a lot more about FOMC, like the last big data point um, coming up. But you're, uh, the GDP people have are, are kind of trained that we're in this long and grinding cycle and that uh, corp uh, inflation numbers just aren't anywhere close to where they need to be. Uh, and I mean, unless it really falters, it's not going to change the narrative. And I think Yellen as well. I think everybody knows what she's going to say. There's not going to be a whole lot of outliers. And you can see just with asset class volatility around me, it seems like we have a mini risk on uh, mode once again. Mm. So is the bottom line outlook for you still the same for equities post a lot of these central bank meetings with the Fed and BOJ and so forth? Where do you see the market going for the remainder of the year? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a long grinding cycle. I do believe now um, sovereign yields are not going to drop as uh, we're not going to hit those July lows like, you know, people expected. And that's just going to make the math a lot harder for the equity market. Uh, right now, um, 2200 and the S&P 500 seems to be where it wants to go. And that's the, that's the high to get beyond that. It's going to take a lot of uh, uh, a lot of confident people in, in the 2017 earnings per share. I still think the money, the better money uh, in the equity market um, is still in England. Uh, I believe that emerging markets, especially China, is a place to go. I'm still underweight the U.S. If you want to be in the U.S., I do believe uh, value is the place to go and you want to get out of like that low volatility momentum stocks everybody is in right now. All right. Fantastic, Larry. It's been great talking to you. Really appreciate your time as always. Thanks very much. Thank you.